So I've been making a ton of progress on my project Deep Space Directive. Placeholder art is gone, bugs are getting squished, tile-based fog of war has been added, a Steam store page is up and running, please go wishlist. Lots and lots of little details are getting polished and it's starting to look and feel like a real game. And with any project that I've ever worked on, there's successes and there's challenges. And to be honest, the thing that I love the most about game design is those challenges and how they force you into that creative problem solving space. And that space is enormous. There's a ton of good solutions, there's bad solutions, and then there's those rare rainbow unicorn solutions that make everything better and often solve more than one problem all at once. Which brings me to the topic of this video. I've been working to complete or finish the game loop for Deep Space Directive, and I've been a little stuck. And that's because I've been looking for one of those rare solutions that's going to solve multiple problems and just feels good and feels right. And I think I found it, which is what I want to talk about and what I want to share in this video. But before I do that, I want to rewind a little bit so you know where I'm coming from and you know why I'm excited about this solution. The first half of the game loop is working. The player is guided through adding the basic buildings, and when that's done, the first wave of enemies spawns. But after that, we start to run into problems. Why should the player continue and what should they do? They're kind of left hanging. I know this all sounds pretty basic and like things that I should have had planned out earlier. and Maybe I should have. But I didn't, and frankly, I like letting the design evolve somewhat organically. I had an overall vision and plan for the game, but I knew that the details would get challenged once I could play the game, and I need to tweak, adjust, and maybe scrap ideas altogether in order to make the game fun. One of the original design pillars of the game was to allow the player to build and shape the world around them, so I wanted to make the starting landmass small to create a need for the players to expand the terrain. But to build the land, you need the resources dropped by the enemy, and the enemy only spawns at night which means you have to wait to kill the enemy and collect the resources. And you might see where I'm going with this. It all adds up to a rather slow start to the game, which isn't great to engage new players. So I came up with a few solutions. The first solution, increase the drop rate of the land building resource. Option two, spawn more enemies. Option three, give the player more to do by making more buildings available at the start of the game. Now, all these solutions will solve the problem now, but they'll cause bigger design problems down the road. And this is why I was stuck. I had three options, but none of them solved the problem in a good way, and it left my game loop incomplete. Which brings up yet another problem that I've been trying to solve. With a small initial starting mass, it's easy to put buildings in the wrong place and block the correct placement of other buildings. For example, putting solar panels near water seems like a perfectly reasonable thing to do. But when it comes time to place the water pump, which must be placed next to water, and with limited waterfront real estate, it's really easy to run out of building locations. Now, I don't want to hold the player's hand too much, but a mistake like this early on in the game could be more than frustrating, and it provide a pretty good reason to quit and try a different game. It's not what I'm trying to do. But to me, these issues, these problems are so central to the game being fun that it's worth a lot of time spent trying to figure them out. And again, what might sound like complaining is me just identifying a challenge and a problem that I get to solve. And I love that. When I get stuck or I'm hyper-focused on a particular problem, I've learned to take a step back, get a different perspective, and ask myself a few questions. What is the real problem? What am I trying to achieve? Is there a larger overarching problem that if we solve that problem, we'll also solve this smaller problem? In this particular case, what I want is for the player to continue to build their base with their current level of tech. But there's no space to build, not to mention the player doesn't have any motivation to continue building. Nothing is asking for more food or more metal ore, Things are good, so why should the player do anything? When it comes to problem solving, I'm a pretty firm believer that more isn't better. More tech, more content, more code. Those things don't necessarily make for a better game. Better is better. I've also often found that multiple problems can often be solved by a single good choice or design decision. And it's that rare unicorn solution that I'm so determined to find. Of course, as always, there's more than one solution to any given problem. My first thought to solve the building placement was to add in some helper system for the player to show where they should or shouldn't place the building. Some nice visual overlay as the player is adding buildings. This solution also feels like feature creep. One more manager, one more system to create, debug, and maintain. It also sets off mental warnings that I'm trying to solve a problem by doing more instead of doing better. And the real issue is less about the player knowing exactly where to put the buildings and more about the player easily blocking the few positions near resources early in the game. And honestly, saying that thing out loud and realizing that was a major breakthrough. So 
why not surround the water and the metal ore with buildable grass tiles? When this dawned on me, I couldn't believe how simple it was, both in terms of the idea itself and the implementation. A couple lines of code to create a new coroutine, and it works. Once again, simple beats complex. Not only can the player not realistically screw up the placement of the first few buildings, they now have more land and more area to expand and build. This also turns out to be a partial solution to the problem that started this whole video, that being completing the game loop. This small amount of added land means there's now room to expand after that first wave of enemies. There's room for more mines, more water pumps, more everything. And I just love simple solutions like this. This is exactly what I was looking for. All right, the player now has space to expand and build, but why? The game loop still isn't complete. There needs to be something more, something for the player to accomplish. The main goal or directive of the game is to explore and exploit the resources of a given world and ship those resources off world. So it totally makes sense that this is how I complete the game loop. In game design terms, we need a resource sink. This creates a demand for resources and consumes those resources. Now, at a cynical level, this is just a fancy fetch quest, which is frankly what a lot of base building games are, albeit a very elaborate fetch quest. So I give you the final piece of the game loop, the supply ship. Precious resources will be collected and shipped off world to make your corporate overlords happy or maybe support a global war effort. I still need to work on the theming of the game a little bit. Now, maybe this all sounds obvious and you're just sitting there like, well, of course, that's what you should do. But it feels so good to have that game loop complete. And it's a massive step forward to be able to release a demo. So what's next? Well, what gets shipped off world needs to be more than just a counter or a slider that appears on the screen and slowly increments towards completion. I want it to be meaningful to the player. And to do that, there needs to be some type of reward connected to completing the directive. And this is what I'm currently working on. It might be as simple as choosing directives from a list or it might get integrated into a tech tree like approach. I'm not sure what's going to feel best as a player. I might use one solution for the demo, another solution for the full game. I don't know. I'm just going to have to wait and see what feels right. And hey, if you've made it this far into the video, maybe you'd like to add Deep Space Directive to your Steam wishlist. There's a link down in the description below. Go check it out. And at the end of the day, I hope this was interesting and better yet useful for you and your project. And until next time, happy game setting.